Hi kids, in this video we will continue with motion in one dimension class 9 physics and we will look at equations of motion. We will derive the equation of uniformly accelerated motion. We will derive the equation. Now, we have three equations. First look at the equation V equals to U plus AT. Second equation is S equals to ut plus half a t square and the third equation is v square equals to u square plus 2 a s suppose a body is moving with the initial velocity of u and after time t the final velocity becomes v after time t the acceleration produced over here, of course, the velocity changes. So, acceleration produced is A. And suppose the distance travelled is S. Then these parameters are associated with each other with the help of these three equations. These are my equations of motion, which we are going to derive. How these came? Just look carefully. I'll draw the velocity time graph. We have already done. The I'm just trying, yeah. The velocity this is your velocity, this is your time. The velocity time graph of a uniformly accelerated body. Suppose the initial velocity was u, and after time t, after time t, this is zero, the velocity becomes v. I'll name it. A, this point is B, this is C, this is D point, okay? And what I'll do, I'll draw a parallel line and this point is E. A, B, C, G, E, this point suppose is F, these points, okay? Now look carefully. This is velocity time graph. What do we get by the velocity time graph? We get acceleration. How? By finding the slope of the line BC in this scenario. So, acceleration will be slope of BC, which means acceleration. Slope of BC, how do you find? Change in Y coordinate by change in X coordinate. Change in Y coordinates by change in x coordinate just look carefully now if you look at the diagram properly change in y coordinate is nothing but this the entire thing a f is v a b is u this is u so what will be b f this much will be v the entire thing minus u which means this will be v minus u change in y coordinate is v minus u change in x coordinate is nothing but t minus 0 so this becomes a t equals to v minus u which means a t plus u equals to v which is v equals to u plus a t and that's my first equation of motion by the concept of slope we got it. Done. Now, this equation is done. Let us see the next one. Now, how do you get the distance? We know distance means the area between the sketch and the x-axis. So, distance is nothing but area of A, B, C, D. That figure, which is a trapezium. A, B, C, D is a trapezium where A, B is parallel to C, D and A, D is the perpendicular distance between these two parallel lines A, B and C, D. Try to understand. What I have done in this figure, if you see, there is a rectangle A, B, E, D. So, S will be area of rectangle A, B, E, D plus area of 
triangle BEC. Look at the figure carefully. Triangle BEC. This part and this part. If you add it, you get the total area of ABCD, which is a trapezium. Now, S equals to area of rectangle ABED. Length, which is T, into breadth, which is U. It's quite clear from the diagram. Area of triangle BEC, half, into base, base is T, into height, which has got V minus U. Am I clear? Now look carefully. S equals to UT plus half into T. Now over here if you look, V minus U is AT. I'll substitute over there. Instead of V minus U, I'll put AT. Got it. S equals to UT plus half AT square. That's my second equation of motion. Done. Now the third one. V square equals to U square plus 2AS. I'll just use again the concept of distance. Just look at here. Distance is nothing but area of ABCD, which is a trapezium. Now, distance, what is area of trapezium? Half into sum of parallel side, which means AB plus CD in this figure, AB plus CD into perpendicular distance between them, which is AD. Look carefully in the diagram. So I can write this two goes over here. So 2S equals to AB. AB is U plus CD. CD, the entire thing, this one, is V. Isn't it? This is V. CD. V. AD. AD is how much? AD. That's T. Now, now look. 2S equals to U plus V. I can write V plus U. Doesn't matter. T. Instead of T, can I write from here? Look carefully. T equals to V minus U by A. Of course, we can write. So, I put the value over here. V minus U by A. A comes over here. So, twice AS equals to V plus U and V minus U. A plus V into minus V is A square minus B square. Bring it on this side. So U square plus 2AS equals to V square. And that's my third equation of motion. See, V square equals to U square plus 2AS. So we just derived the three equation of motion using a graph. There is an alternative also. For the derivation. Let's look into that also. Now let us derive the three by another method. By definition suppose. We know acceleration is change in velocity by time. So if A is the acceleration, V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity. So change is V minus U by T. So from here AT equals to V minus U which means AT plus U equals to V, which is the first equation. Done. Just by definition. Now, this was my first. Let us derive the second one. S equals to UT plus half AT squared. That one. Now, we know distance is average velocity into time. That's distance. Distance is S. Average velocity will be what? U plus V by 2. Initial plus final by 2. Time is T. Just look. So S equals to U plus instead of V. Can I write this? U plus AT by 2 into T. We can write. Instead of V, I've used U plus AT. Then S equals to twice U plus AT T by 2. So S equals to, just open the bracket, twice U T plus AT square by 2. So S equals to, so 2 U T by 2 will be U T plus half AT square. 
look carefully. 2 ut by 2 will be 1 plus 1 by 2 into a t square. That's the second equation of motion. S equals to ut plus half a t square. There's one more. V square equals to u square plus 2s. Let us derive that. Same concept. Distance equals to average velocity into time. Now distance is S average velocity u plus v by 2. Time from here. Look carefully. From here we can write time equals to v minus u by a. So I'll put it over here. V minus u by a. 2a goes over here. So 2as equals to this we can write v plus u. V minus u. Which is 2as equals to v square minus u square. Bring it on this side. So 2as plus u square is equal to v square. That's my third equation of motion. Done. This is an alternative way. By the definition, we can get that. Now, few more things. Two special cases I need to discuss. Suppose, suppose a body starts from rest. Special case. Body starts from rest. Which simply means that the initial velocity is 0. U is 0. So what will be V? V equals to AT. What will be S? S will be half A T square. Over here, what will be V square? V square will be 2 A S. See, these three. Because this portion becomes 0. This becomes 0. This becomes 0. Done. So when the body starts from rest, we can say V equals to A T. S equals to half A T square. V square equals to 2 S. One more case. This was uniform acceleration. Suppose there is retardation. The negative of acceleration is retardation. Retardation scenario. What will happen? How the equation will change? Of course, A will become negative. Which means V equals to U minus AT. S equals to UT minus half AT square. And V square is equal to U square minus 2AS. This will be minus 2S. So this is the equation of motion for retardation case. And when the body is at rest, these are my equations. So remember all these equations because these will be needed while we do numericals from this part. So in this video, keep it till here. If you like the video, do subscribe the channel. Take care.